Let's listen a little bit to what we heard last night. And I'll play that Maddow clip in a second, Moynihan. It was gold. Uh, here's Trump pushing Nikki Haley on, you know, she basically declared herself the winner. <laughs> At least that was the tone of what she said. She did congratulate Donald Trump. Um, and said, you know, he won. So good, good for him. But it's not over. And I'm in it. And this is the first state. It's not the last state. And here was Trump in response in SOT 1. She's doing... Uh like a speech like she won. She didn't win, she lost. If you remember, Ron was very upset because she ran up and she pretended she won Iowa. And I looked around, I said, didn't she come in third? Who the hell was the imposter that went up on the stage before and like claimed a victory? She did very poorly, actually. I find in life, you can't let people get away with bullshit, okay? You can't, you just can't do that. <laughs> And when I watched her in the fancy dress that probably wasn't so fancy come up, I said, what's she doing? We won. And she did the same thing last week, but he was much more angry about it than I was. I said, get up there and you let him know. The fake he's motioning to. I love that he switched into Joan Rivers fashion critic there for a minute, Moynihan. Like, what, was, what was that? It was a, the dress wasn't that fancy. I didn't I, <laughs> I don't even know where to go with that. I mean, <laughs> Donald Trump is, um, you know, he is, and before you get to the Maddow clip, it's actually funny that you said this about the DEI stuff is that it does, I think you're right about that, but there are diminishing returns here because, you know, four years plus in this, in the plus is the Biden administration. If you watch MSNBC in the past, like two and a half years, you wouldn't even know that Joe Biden was president. I mean, it is the constant drumbeat of the fascist at the door who's going to be Mussolini 2.0. It's like, wasn't he already president? Did he do it that time? But the thing about it is that, I, I mean, we were talking on the podcast the other day. Somebody said, do you ever go back and listen to the things that you recorded four, five, six, seven years ago? And I said, well, you know, I don't. But if I went back, I probably would have said something about the Russia stuff and said, well, you know, there's a little smoke here. It's kind of suspicious. And that's how we all were at the time. And then after time, we're like, is this is just a concerted effort to try to destroy Trump in a way that is not electoral. And there are people that are incredibly fed up with this stuff. Independence, too. It's like you cannot keep on crying wolf and saying democracy is over. Everything is over. I mean, Donald Trump says, I don't like bullshit. I mean, he's the king bullshitter. Come on. We know he's a bullshitter. We know he lies about the election and this. He said, oh, I won every possible time in New Hampshire. It's like, that's not true, et cetera. He's mm -hmm. bullshitting then. But at the same time, time, you can denounce the fake news media, but you need the fake news media because as, as fake as they are, incredibly beneficial to you because I've met so many people who say, look, I don't like the guy. I don't like his temperament. I don't like his tweets. This was a common refrain when I was at Trump rallies, but the way they treat him is so horribly. And they find that this is like, you know, they don't care that he's a billionaire who had a television show that was number one. They're like, he's being unfairly treated. He's not a Russian stooge. He's not this, you know, fascist that they're portraying him to be. And I have to say, I went to a Trump rally in Detroit a couple of months ago, and I love the fact that Trump flipped it around. And he, now he's using the word fascist. He's like, Joe Biden's a fascist. It was just like, yeah. and he everyone calls them has gone insane. Yeah. Election interferers. I mean, he's like, yes. they're, they're, they're anti-democratic because they're interfering with the election. That's anti-democracy. If you care about democracy, vote for me. That's again, back to his marketing skills. He yeah. knows how to use them. They're actually quite effective. So now and, and it's the term, clear. The term fake news yeah, itself, ahead. he co-opted from them when they Correct. accused that from, like that overseas there were yes. these fake news farms in, in, yep. in Eastern right. Europe, which got elected. And then he just co-opted it and he called them the fake news. It's yes, brilliant. that's exactly right. Yeah. So I don't know what Nikki Haley is going to do. I don't know if she's actually going to get out before she gets humiliated in home, her home state where he's beating her by 30 points or if she's just going to kind of stick around kind of collecting random delegates, because even if you're not the winner, if you're still in it, you can get a delegate here or there so that if Trump goes to jail or God forbid dies, something like that, she can be like, here, I, I have the next most delegates, as if that would mm -hmm. entitle her to be, that, that's not going to be how it works if one of those things happens. But I have no idea what she's doing, but it's over. It's She's done. Yeah. Um, so we can like pretend as long as she wants. It's just it's obvious what's happened here. He's won. Um, so now what's happening around him and the messaging is kind of interesting. So he, I'll give you a couple of examples. Jim Messina, the guy who got Barack Obama elected, he uh, had a tweet that he put out that reads as follows. I wake up every morning and drop to my knees and pray, 
please God, give me Donald Trump as the GOP nominee. Now, I'll bet that's true. I'll bet he does want Donald Trump. And I'll bet there really are a bunch of Democrats who believe that the indictments would be a great way to stir up the Republican base behind him and set him up to fall once he hit the general electorate because you look back at, for example, the New Hampshire polling and the question among the New Hampshire electorate voting in the Republican primary. Again, these are largely Republicans and so-called unaffiliated, believed to be independent voters. The question was, if he were to be convicted of a crime, would you consider him fit to be president? Um, Yes, 54%, 42% said no. 42% of those voting in the GOP primary yesterday in New Hampshire said if he gets convicted, he's not fit. And that's why Jim Messina is hoping that Trump will be the nominee, which which he is, which he's going to be. So I have to say, I've got real questions about whether they should be hoping for this, Smug, because I know they say, I, I'm reading the polls. If he gets convicted, it's a no. I, I'll change my opinion. But I really think, given the amount of coverage that's gonna come this next year, and coverage not just from MSNBC, but from you and from you guys, Moynihan on the fifth column, and from me and from Ben Shapiro, people who are not bought and paid for by anyone, but can see what's being done to him, even if you're not a huge Trump fan, that that will permeate. You know, I would venture to say, like, I I know between the three of us, we actually have a fair amount of independents listening to us. You know, Moynihan, your podcast is more libertarian. You're more sort of standard Republican smug, you guys. I'm center right, but I got a lot of center lefties listening to me. They're going to hear the truth. And I am just not convinced that when push comes to shove, these valuable independents who he does need are going to be so horrified at a quote conviction because I think the truth about Jack Smith, already about Fannie Willis, never mind Alvin Bragg, is going to come out. It's coming out. Yeah, I mean, I think an issue here is you've seen Democrats really breach this kind of unprecedented approach to what they think elections should be like. For some group that has essentially made their platform that we are defending democracy, saving democracy, the use of lawfare essentially to secure an election victory is it's unprecedented. This is this is a, a kind of a, a new tack that's being taken. And I think they have not considered the long-term ramifications of this. This is almost seeming like, you know, Harry Reid again, um, getting warned by Mitch McConnell that you're going to regret this sooner than later. And now we've got a conservative Supreme Court as a result of that. The fact that Democrats are counting on, we want to be able to sue someone into losing an election, that that's the approach that they want to be able to control voter perception through the use of of elected officials who run on, I will sue Donald Trump. That's that's a, it's a very new kind of way to approach elections. And it's an extremely cynical approach to voters. And I think it will really poison you know, for all this talk of we need a leader who can bring back a divided America together, that's the best way to cleave almost irreparably the electorate, where you make it that we will win elections by any means necessary. They've already shown their willingness to uh, try and have, uh, you know, members of uh, um, the, the former CIA and FBI people saying, oh, yeah, this Hunter Biden thing, it's classic Russian disinformation ahead of an election. They wanted to withhold information from voters. And then afterwards, they're like, oh, well, you know, what are you going to do? It was real. We already Mm -hmm. won. So the cynical uh, approach that Democrats have taken is starting to catch up with them. I think the polling among independent voters is very real. They are still, you know, if if Trump is convicted, they're gone. They will flee. And and that's pretty much ballgame. But I think going forward, making that, you know, uh, a, a part of their election campaign process of just suing their opponents into submission, winning elections by any means necessary is really going to cleave the country. I just don't know. I read the polls. I I do not deny that's what the independents are saying. Conviction, it's a no. I just have a hard time believing they actually will follow through on it. I think that the next year, and look, let's, let's be honest, we don't even know whether the trials are going to get underway, never mind get concluded before November now. I mean, they've been kicked back in a couple of jurisdictions, they're having massive problems in a couple of others. So it's possible that the news will not be as dominated as we once thought with his criminal trials. 
But Moynihan, they will be dominated by Trump. Trump is about to come, you know how like when he wasn't president, or at least sometime there, we had some time where we weren't talking about Trump all the time. We right, weren't yeah. thinking about Trump all the time. And let's be honest, that was kind of a nice reprieve. Like I'd rather think about my own life, my own problems than think about Donald Trump's problems all the time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I look, I, yeah, he's yeah. about to come back in a national review and in a big way. And I'll just play the Nikki Haley, Haley messaging on this now because she is starting to get it means Kamala Harris. What? And then this is the second line she's been using lately in SOT 4. Biden too old. Trump too much chaos. A rematch no one wants. There's a better choice for a better America. Her story started right here. America's youngest governor, a conservative Republican. And boy, did she deliver. It's a great day in South Carolina. All right, so that's her first ad she's running in South Carolina. But it begins with Biden's too old and Trump is too much chaos. Trump is too much chaos. That's the risk over the next year as he's in the news every day. I mean, that line is right, actually. It's the rematch that nobody wants. I mean, this is every I mean, How did we get into this situation where every poll suggests that Republicans and Democrats don't want their nominee? And it's like, <laughs> oh, no, not this again. Groundhog Day with uh, 2020. It's like, do we need this? And as you said, it's like you get a reprieve from Trump and you feel kind of like you can exhale a little bit. And, you know, to the point of of independence, I mean, I think you're right if they're educated independence, if they're engaged independence. If the people are not that engaged, I mean, the, the specifics of uh, Fannie Willis and Alvin Bragg and some of this stuff eludes people, not because they're not clever and not bright, they're just not paying that much attention, but I they think, that, you know, they have lives. And, you know, what Smug said is, is is also right, is that, you know, this, what really drives people crazy is this idea that to save democracy, we have to smother elements of democracy. So for instance, the hilarious thing of Rachel Maddow saying, we don't want this dictator and this uh, anti-democratic, we're just going to, you, you can't hear him. We, you're Wait, too here it stupid is. to actually now hear Now we've teased him. it twice. Let's play it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Top five. Uh, we're expecting Trump to speak momentarily. We are going to go to those remarks uh, to see how he uses this Brace moment. Yourselves. At least at first, we'll see how it Whoa. goes. Again, this is a decision that um, is one that we consider to be an open-ended live decision. Um, let's go to Trump headquarters right now in Nashua, New Hampshire. You know, we won New Hampshire three times now, three <laughs> We, we win it every time. We win the primary. We win the generals. Wow, so she's still there we go. Um, so this is part of the issue here. The former president has opened his remarks tonight once again by proclaiming um, falsehoods about previous elections. This is what makes it hard to take him, uh, his pronouncements live. We'll try again, though. Here we go. You have the very... The oh, my God. Oh, Moynihan. No, oh. I, I, I want you to cover your children's ears. I know a lot of eight-year-olds are listening to Megyn Kelly's show, but how Actually, I have some. You, I know. How the hell, let me correct that. Do you run a cable news network that is based on politics and showing politicians speak and cutting away when they lie? I mean, as Mary McCarthy <laughs> once said about Lillian Hellman, every word she says is a lie, including and and the. This is what <laughs> happens with politicians. They lie. But why are you so specific about protecting us from this person? It is so condescending to listeners, oh. to viewers, to voters that you can't make up your mind. I, Rachel Maddow, can make it up for you because I'm going to tell you. Here's a great New Year's resolution. It's not too late that you can actually keep, even if you only have three minutes in the morning. Introducing Gen 90, the new instant wrinkle treatment from Genucel. Genucel says that Gen 90 can reduce the appearance of wrinkles anywhere you use it. Eyes, forehead, crow's feet, laugh lines, and it can start working in seconds. Genucel says Gen 90 is two generations better than any immediate effects product, which is already super popular, and years ahead of the skincare market. Gen 90 technology is luxurious, nourishing, and silky smooth. And best of all, it starts working instantly. 
There's a reason why GenuCell has so much more customer loyalty compared to other skincare brands. Gen 90 is on sale right now at GenuCell.com, and it's included in their best seller package. Don't go overseas to get harsh procedures for thousands of bucks. Try Gen 90. The results are guaranteed or your money back. What do you have to lose? Make your fine lines and wrinkles disappear. And for the first time ever, order Gen 90 with every most popular package for over 70% off. GenuCell.com slash MK60. GenuCell.com slash MK60. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.